Hello again, beautiful artists, and welcome back to another episode of Paint Along with Sky. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Sky, and I post beginning level acrylic painting tutorials here on YouTube every Saturday. So make sure to hit subscribe so you can join the fun and paint along, and don't forget to hit the bell icon to be notified when I post a new video. Alright, so this week it is, I think I'm finally officially fall, uh, and I'm in the fall state of mind uh, pretty much all the time, so it's my favorite time of year. Uh, and I have a really fun fall themed painting for us today of a wagon wheel and some pumpkins with some sunflowers. I'm going to be using our four standard brushes for this course, use these guys in most of my classes. Uh, this is a kit that comes with four sizes, the size and shape are what's important here. Um, so I have a square wash brush, a medium sized pointed brush, and then two small detail brushes. If you have brushes that are about like this, that's okay, or you can get the kit. I'm going to get those in my water cup off the side of the screen. The colors that I have to start with today's background first step, just some black and white, a little bit of a warm brown, so that's burnt sienna brown, and a little bit of cadmium yellow. To see a full materials list of everything that you need to paint along, check the description box below. I think we're ready to go ahead and jump on in. All right, so I'm just going to grab my largest brush here, this guy right here, and we're going to start today's painting how I start a lot of paintings, which is with a horizon line. So let's go ahead and just make a very, very light beige color. Uh, this is going to be much lighter than the color that we're going to use to fill in, but just to do sort of like a sketch here. And we're going to go up maybe a little less than a third of the way, a little more than a quarter. Okay. And that's going to be my horizon line of how far I need to take the top down. So this is going to be now, uh, in my mind, it was like a fence. Uh, or maybe even a structure like a barn. And then on the bottom here, we have some dry grass. So I'm just going to now fill in my two sections with these base colors. A Little bit of black here, and I'm just gonna make a simple gray. And I have my same square brush. And I'm going to go up and down and create a little bit of streaky color and we're just going to bring it right to that little beige line and if you come into the beige line a little bit that's okay but try not to blend your gray with your beige line okay we'll have a chance to bring the beige color up to meet the gray we'll have a nice seamless transition there with the next step but we don't want streaky beige through our gray necessarily. We want those to be different, separate colors. And I'm just gonna do one little horizontal line real quick to get it filled in to the gray or to the beige. But then I wanna come back and make sure all my brush strokes are going up and down. So we're building the wood grain with these slight variants of color already. Okay, so nice and consistent with all of our brush strokes up and down, very light gray, almost like an off-white, perhaps an off-white weathered barn or picket fence. All right, and that looks pretty close to where I'm wanting it, but going to add a little bit more dark gray in a couple places just for some added interest and in texture here. Definitely have too much black on my palette paper, but I like to transfer some paint a lot of times to my fresh palette because it's hard to Get that paint back in the tube. All right. Looking good. Very simple. Rinsing my brush now, and I'm going to make more of my beige color. I'm going to bring a few more bits of this warm brown into my white, 
And I'm also going to mix it with a little bit of yellow for my sort of dry grass color. And then I'm just gonna put that down there in the remaining bottom section. And I'm going to go horizontally with these brush strokes. Okay, so we have vertical meets horizontal for a little bit of interest. And we can take this beige color right up to make a nice, straight, clean line right over our original sketch line. And I'm trying to make it sort of as straight as I can. But it's also going to be mostly covered, so it doesn't matter too much. All right. Once we have everything nice and filled in, and we have no white canvas left, we're going to go ahead and step away and let this first layer dry. And then we'll come back and add a whole bunch more. Hello again, beautiful artists. Sky here with an exciting channel announcement. Intermediate courses are now available through YouTube memberships. The program is called the Paint Along with Sky Gold Stars program, and membership includes exclusive access to two longer tutorials per month where I take you through step by step one more challenging painting. One painting, two parts. With the Gold Stars program, I'll be taking you through a more traditional painting process where we will use a reference photo and a grid sketch method. If you've been painting along with me for a while and you'd like to challenge yourself a little bit, I invite you to join us. Membership includes sized printable reference photos, access to the bi-weekly videos, which are uploaded on the first and third Thursdays of the month, Membership will also, of course, support me and the channel and allow me to keep providing the free tutorials and the intermediate program for everyone in perpetuity. To find out more information and to get signed up, simply click the join button on any of my videos or on my channel homepage. I can't wait to get creative with you. See you soon. Okay, welcome back artists. We have a fully dry background here and then some fresh colors on the new piece of palette paper. So I have some black and white, a little bit of cobalt blue, some cadmium orange and cadmium yellow, and a little bit of burnt sienna. I rinsed my brushes and got some fresh water at break as well. Let's go ahead and jump right back on into it. All right, so the main focal points here are our pumpkins and our wagon wheel. Now for the wagon wheel, rather than challenging myself to try to freehand a perfect circle, I'm going to bring in a handy tool from my kitchen, complete with water spots, <laughs> uh, which is a pot lid. Um, so just a lid to a little stovetop pot, and I'm just going to place that uh, overlapping here into my beige section a little bit, and sort of more towards the left. I don't like to center things. It looks a little bit more interesting if it's off center. Uh, and then I'm going to grab some, a little bit of a darker beige, so just burnt sienna and white together on one of my smaller brushes. I have my second to smallest brush here. And we're just going to do a quick circle now around my pot lid. And you can use a dish or even like a compass uh, for math to get a circle really whatever works and whatever is about the right size from your canvas. If you do use something from the kitchen, make sure and wash it thoroughly before you use it for food again. All right, and there we have our main circle shape. So it's gonna be a lot easier now to make our wheel just that much nicer. So then I'm going to go from the top and the bottom here, and I am gonna eyeball this part. I'm going to do two little dashes and then I'm very lightly going to connect the two and you could use a straight edge for this if you wanted to. The circles are harder. 
and then I'm going to just cut that right in half as well. And then also through our diagonals, just like we're slicing a pie or a pizza. Ooh, that was a little bit wonky, but that's all right. I always start skinny. That way you can always thicken things up if you need to. And then once we have our shape, let's go ahead and fill that shape in with a base color right now as well. So I'm just gonna be using a slightly darker brown with brown and white together, very simple. And then I'm just going to come over here and thicken things up. I know my hand blocks sometimes. Apologies, there is no cameraman. I want to mention that you can zoom in if you're on a touch screen device for the smaller steps and that can be helpful. Appreciate your support of the one woman show. And I got a little too thick over there, but I'm going to thicken my wheel part pretty significantly. So that's all right. We'll get there after a few passes. And kind of finesse things as we go. And we want to cover that original sketch line completely. All right, we're just being patient here and getting this all consistently sized and trying to keep that circle shape. I know sketches like this can be a little bit challenging to get these main shapes all laid out with your paintbrush rather than a pencil. In my Gold Stars Intermediate program that I recently launched through YouTube memberships, we actually sketch uh, with a pencil and we put a grid down first to transfer the shapes from a reference photo. And I'm telling you guys, it really changes the game and it's actually a lot easier. I'm, I'm surprising myself uh, with those tutorials. <laughs> I know it sounds a little intimidating, but I did make it approachable still for beginners. So it's good to have a couple classes, of course, under your belt so you can see how the process works, get used to mixing colors a little bit. But the idea with the intermediate program is to bring you into the space of being an intermediate artist. It's not so much that you have to be one already. And the idea is too, that you can then paint from photographs, anything that you want. And it just brings out a better final product too, to be honest. I like doing it this way too. We're kind of winging it, having fun, keeping casual. But I'm showing you guys the tricks of the trade over there. And making it as approachable as possible. I tried to make the price point approachable for you guys too. It's about the 10th, the cost of what a two day class would be at an art center. Most places at least. And we do it in, in two days as well, in two parts. So it's the first and third Thursdays of the month. It's very exciting. I really encourage you guys to check it out. <laughs> and I see your work sometimes too, so I know that there's some students that are ready for it. Speaking of which, if you are new here, there is an Art Share Facebook group where we share our work. I love seeing your guys' versions of the paintings. Uh, and also just whatever else you're creating. And that is free to join. That's the art club. And there's links below to join the art club, take you over to Facebook. And then there's also to join the membership program, you click the join button. Okay, 
Okay, almost consistently filled out here with our wheel shape, looking pretty good. I wanna make sure that the outside is a little bit wider than our like spokes. Okay, the wheel part, the part that would attach. Well, I guess I wouldn't attach to a wheel. This is it. The wagon wheel is just wood. I was thinking like the inside of a bike, but no, can't say that um, I've examined wagon wheels too close. <laughs> okay, and I'm trying to correct this area a little bit over there because I got a little bit fuzzy, but I'm gonna leave that for now and we're gonna add highlights and shadows so I will finesse things even further on a second pass and then we're gonna do a little circle here right in the middle as well and everything is just super simple filled in right now with the medium brown okay. all right so we have our basic wagon wheel shape Let's do our pumpkins now. And I'm just gonna rinse my brush and mix up my gorgeous light blue pumpkin color. I'm gonna do, I believe the blue pumpkins are called Cinderella pumpkins. So pretty. I just love pumpkins. And I'm going to do this blue one first, pretty much all the way over to the right. And I'm just gonna start with a little curve line. This pumpkin is going to be more tall and it has sort of like a heart-shaped top and then we're just going to swoop around for a sort of slightly flattened oval bottom and then I'm just going to fill that pumpkin in also now with that same light color of blue and our pumpkin is much smaller than the wheel. All right, filled in, and I'm actually bringing the brush strokes in the direction of the pumpkin as well. Building up some nice texture there. And with some wet on wet, I think we'll go ahead and add the sections of the pumpkin now too. So I have that same brush and I rinsed it and I'm gonna take a darker blue, which is gonna be blue with a little bit of black and white. And then from the top point of the pumpkin here, I'm going to do a couple little quick sections coming down. Our wet on wet blending helps us not be too heavy handed with this. It should blend a little bit into the light blue. And then in between those sections that we just created, we're gonna lighten it a little bit. So my paint's drying very quickly but I wanna take then an even lighter blue and add some highlights in the middle parts of the little sections that we just made. But I don't want anything to look too streaky, which is sort of a matter of back and forth here. So once you add your colors, you can take some more of the original background color just this light blue and sort of tone things down a little bit very gently just kind of touch around the pumpkin but it looks pretty good on its own so let's leave that to dry and then we're going to do a little orange pumpkin in just the same way right next door give the pumpkin a friend and my pumpkin color I'm going to use mostly cadmium orange. I'm going to sneak a little bit of yellow in there. 
And then I'm also going to add some white because orange and yellow don't have very high opacity and I don't want to see through pumpkin here. No ghost pumpkin. Although that sounds like a cute idea for a future class. <laughs> and I'm going to do a very similar shape to my blue pumpkin. This one's going to be a little bit smaller and a little bit shorter too. You can see we have a little bit of see-throughness. So we're going to try to cover that as best as we can. But sometimes you need to sneak a second coat on. So you can be the judge there of your own painting. And if you can still see through it, you might need to add a little bit later too. But we also do want to get on that wet on wet blending now. So once I have my pumpkin shape, so cute, <clears throat> I'm going to take a little bit of a, like a warm brown burnt orange. Okay, still that same second to smallest brush, but you could use the smallest if you needed to. A lot of times the smaller brushes will make you feel a little bit more in control of the situation. Okay, so orange brown and then same idea with our little cute curved sections. Super cute. I don't know what it is about pumpkins but they're just cute. <laughs> just love their shape. I love to hold them. I love that they're like kind of cool to the touch. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I'm a pumpkin oholic. I always have been. All right, and same idea here is our blue and that we want to add highlights too. So I'm taking that same light yellow orange with a little bit more white in it for the highlight color and just adding some super subtle highlights. A lot of times you can get any see-through taken care of with the highlights and shadows. Okay, and remember too that you can tone things down a little bit if you need to with some more of the base color. Some more of that just <clears throat> standard yellow orange. Great. Those are looking so cute. Loving it. And our wagon wheel is dry-ish and almost ready. I'm going to make a unique green today with just my yellow and blue mixed together and maybe a little bit of white as well. Green's pretty easy to make. Okay and then over here we're going to do a little bit of stems for where our sunflowers are going to be and I was inspired by the wild sunflowers that grow here in the southwest here in the u.s and they are like wild they're like weeds almost and they grow kind of scraggly and so they have these very thin branches and then they'll come out in a couple different directions here and i want to sort of intertwine it through the wagon wheel. This painting was lightly inspired by my neighbor's fence. <laughs> and then also just my imagination. We're going to put our sunflowers onto this stem. It's okay if it looks a little weird right now, um, but we're just having the green added first. And we're going to do a couple big leaves attached as well. I'm going to have them come out to a nice point and then just have really nice thick 
bases to the leaf. Okay, maybe some are kind of coming behind. I'm kind of thinking like, where do I want to put my flowers? They can even kind of crisscross. And then adding a little bit of greenery. Yours can look slightly different. Doesn't need to be the exact same setup as me. We're just adding our lovely sunflowers. And everything looks kind of bold right now. We're just on this base color step, but we're also going to kind of hide everything in there slightly with grass. So that's going to look really cute too. Make everything sort of more subtle. So don't worry right now. I'm going to have one more little cute sunflower popping up from there. And let's have the actual sunflower part now with some beautiful bright yellow same brush <clears throat> I'm gonna add a little bit of white to up the opacity of the yellow so that it's not see-through and then I'm going to just top each of my stems where I left space for my flower with my flower shape and I'm just gonna go round and round with those tiny little brush strokes. You can do the sort of four corners first if that's easier and then come in between. But you want lots of little brush strokes here coming out from the center. And try not to blend too much with your green, try to get that covered. And I think it looks a little nicer with more sunflowers. These sunflowers bloom in the fall, this time of year. And they're pretty vibrant. I think I'm just gonna have one kind of poking out here too, even though it's not even necessarily connected to a stem. Cute, cute, cute. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, probably have like eight or so when it's all said and done, eight or, eight or nine. I wanna have enough yellow in the composition to sort of balance the blue and gray tones. And enough green too. Okay, you can have one coming here, kind of off the side too, looks nice. Super cute. I love wild sunflowers. Probably my favorite flower and they have these great black centers. And the bugs go crazy for them. Chat like that part. But they're important pollinators, so I respect the bugs, even though I don't care for them. <laughs> okay, so cute. <clears throat> now we're just gonna kind of do a second layer on top of all these guys and sort of finish off each little section before we add our grass. So I'm going to come back to my pumpkins really quick and I'm going to add some gray tops and I'm going to do a cute little sort of S curve shape. Adorable. And then for my orange pumpkin, I think I'm actually going to add a little bit of brown into my gray for a slightly different tone. And I want to have a slightly different curve shape there too. Mixing it up, keeping it different. Tiny bit of wet on wet blending with the same brush and just a pinch of white. I'm gonna do a quick little swipe 
right down the same shape that I just made and just that subtle little step like that adds a lot of depth. Now I'm going to take a little bit of a dark gray here into my blue pumpkin and I'm going to start to sort of outline the outside edges but I don't need a full outline I'm just going to kind of sneak my way down a little bit and then I'm going to do the same thing at the top part here of those lines of the sections and then also at the bottom as well so our highlight is here at the center of our pumpkin so we're just shadowing the bottom and top to lean into that roundness of it. Okay, so just like so. And then also, where's my color? Gray blue. Also a few little shadows here at the bottom. Okay, super simple, that's what it's all about. Just getting those base shapes and adding your highlights and shadows. And I think we could go even a little bit lighter here right in the center for our brightest highlight. And that pumpkin's looking pretty cute. All right, and let's do the same thing now right next door. Going to take that same sort of dark burnt orange, but I'm also going to add a little bit of black to it for the shadow color. Darker version of that base color is all it is. Got a little heavy handed over there. That's all right. So cute, and then I think maybe even a pinch darker. So we got a dark brownish black for a really quick little shadow wiggle. This would be a good time to zoom as well. Little details. This one is a little bit more challenging. I like to mix it up for you guys and have some that are a little easier and some that are a little bit more involved, but all the paintings, even the intermediate program, are done the same way, step by step. So you just follow along. Okay, great. Those are looking so cute. And then I'm gonna come back into my wheel now and finish that guy off with a little bit of highlights and shadows too. So I'm going to take a dark brown here into my original little batch of medium brown. So there was a little bit of white in there. And with this dark color, I'm going to come around the inside of my wheel. And I'm going to go patiently all the way around. And this is our chance to refine things. Correct that shape if needed. Get rid of any see-throughness. Great. And then just one of the sides here. Actually, let's do both. Let's do to make these look round. Gonna do a little quick shade on either side. Okay. 
And this is again where we're trying to refine the shape and in this case trying to make the spokes all even and all the same width and trying hard to stay straight up and down. It's always more challenging to paint the painting without moving it around, I find. So for me, for these classes, it's tricky and it also is hard to talk and paint at the same time. <laughs> but I manage. I'm a good talker. Not as good of a painter when I talk though. But feel free in your studio and your work to move the painting around to get all these little small details. And it also helps to sort of change the perspective and look at your painting in different ways. And some of my flowers are going to be behind and some are going to be in front. So I have to choose what goes where and make sure that makes sense. And so for this green right here, it's a little see-through still. So I'm going to add another little coat on top of that because it needs it while I'm over here. Okay. And then still back to the wagon wheel. Same brush. And back to my dark brown. I'm going to do a quick held line. Here of our center point and then I'm going to do a little inner circle as well looking good okay now I'm going to take a lighter color highlight color just a nice light brown and we're going to take this highlight all through our shape, including around in that center part. In the center here of our spokes, although you don't need to go all the way down and make it look stripey. You just kind of want to throw a little highlight on there and go. And that's kind of what makes it like fun and rustic too. Okay, and then I'm going to take my highlight color and bring it along the outside edge as well. Okay, and heavy, heavier in some areas, lighter handed in other areas, and this area is bothering me right here. So I'm just going to touch that up real quick with the under color, base, base brown color here. Okay, wagon wheels looking pretty cute though. All right, and I think maybe even one tiny pinch lighter in some of these areas as well. Lots of different shades of brown. Looking great though. Only a few more steps. So we're going to do a little bit of highlights and shadows now, of course, on our sunflowers. And some of these guys might need just a touch more yellow. So again, yellow doesn't have that good coverage power that a lot of the other colors do. All right, and then in the center, I'm going to take a shadow color, which I'm going to just do a light orange. Just bring some orange over here into my light yellow. And I'm going to do a little bit of shadowing right in the center of each of my little flowers. This is gonna go around where the black center is gonna be. So 
you want to leave a little spot in the middle. Still, of course, for our black centers. I think the black and yellow together is just so late summer into fall. I love it. Great. Okay. And then I'm just going to take a little bit of black. I think it's a little harsh to go full black. So let's grab a little bit of brown with that. And then I'm just going to add a little circle there to the center of each of my flowers. And some of them might be a little bit more oval shaped and some of them will be fully circular because as they would be facing the camera just like that guy is a good one to do an oval they would be taking sort of different angles Pretty big centers compared to the size of the flower. Cute. Okay, and then since those don't show up very well, I'm going to take a little bit of a burnt orange color. So it's going to be brown mixed with orange. And around my flowers, I'm just going to do a quick little wiggle and actually. I'd like to use my smallest brush for this. And just a tiny little wiggle around the outside of the flowers. And that first one I got a little too heavy handed. So I'm probably going to sneak some more yellow in there to try to tone that down a little bit. I can also touch up later. But just an ever so slight little kind of squiggle. That one was more what I was going for. Along the outside so that we can really see the flower shape. Every single one needs the same treatment. Cute. Great. All right, moving right along. I'm going to grab my slightly larger brush again. And I'm going to do a quick highlight here in my leaves. So I just have a lighter version of that green color. I'm going to do just a quick little swipe there in each of the leaves. And then also in some of the stems. So we're adding a different highlight color. Adding some interest here so that it's not just that solid green. Pretty simple though. And I think I'll take a little bit of a slightly darker green. Just added a little bit more blue. And some black. For a little bit of a shadow color. Kind of right through all those green shapes as well. Quick little touch of highlight and shadow. Okay, refining, defining. Great. Okay, last couple little final steps. So cute. They're gonna be really simple. Hard work is pretty much over. <laughs> so 
So let's make a beautiful beige color. And I'm going to just use this brown that I have, which is just brown and white and a little bit of black. And I'm gonna also use a little bit of yellow. We'll come, on, come up with this sort of medium beigey brown color. Yeah, it's maybe a little bit too dark. There we go. And I'm going to now sort of nestle our little composition into some dry grass. And I'm just using a little flick of the wrist here for these blades of grass. And I'm just leaving sort of the bottom center part of the pumpkin. And then kind of working my way back here. And this whole little area is just gonna be a little tuft of grass. And we'll have some grass coming up here near our wagon wheel. And sort of around that as well. Okay, so lots of little tiny brush strokes here. And I'm refilling my paint fairly frequently. And we're gonna have some grass kind of growing around our sunflowers here in that space between the wagon wheel and the barn or fence. Okay, and then some right in front as well. And then I'm also going to have a little sort of tuft of grass coming out from the side so that we get sort of like layers of this grass. And this one here in the front, see I went different ways with it. And the one here in the, in the front, uh, we're gonna add on the other side as well sort of frame the composition a little bit with it. All right, need lots and lots of brush strokes. And they would be smaller in the background than in the foreground. Okay, we have our nice little tuft over here. Okay. Then I'm going to take a shadow color. Again, so we're just working in our ground now to finish things off. Almost out of canvas or palette space, rather. And I'm going to make a darker brown. as our shadow color. Okay, and then with that darker brown, I'm just going to add a little swipe on most of those same brush strokes. We'll be able to see things much better. And then we're also going to have a little bit of sort of like ground shadow, right where everything is touching the dead grass. Okay, so just little tiny horizontal brush strokes in front of our pumpkins and in front of our grass. I'm doing this very, very light-handed. Okay, 
Okay, and then just adding a little bit of shadow all the way across. Same idea. Making everything cozy and nestled into our little tufts of grass here. Okay, very, very light handed. We need to shadow a little bit where our wagon wheel is touching the ground. We don't even want too much see-throughness with our grass step too. So I'm doing the same thing in that I'm trying to get good coverage power partially also with the second pass and third pass of color when we're adding our highlights and shadows. So cute. All right, a little bit more water into that color. I'm just going to add a little bit more horizontal texture here. So cute. Palm stretch here, folks. And then I'm going to try to find the whitest white that I have left here. And I'm going to tone it down slightly with a little bit of beige so that it's not too solid bright white. And then I'm just coming in here with the white, off-white beige color as well. Adding a little bit of highlights here and there. Okay. Very light handed with this step two and then a little bit of highlights here in the center too. So we have our little flicks of the wrist with these colors, with our blades of grass, and then horizontal brush strokes, sort of in the middle part. So we have our shadows sort of more towards the edges. Always have a little bit of water mixed with your paint Keep everything flowing. And the sunflowers are kind of coming out from the little patch of grass. Okay. Looking pretty good. My final step here is actually back where we started today with the first color of our gray here of our background. And I'm going to make a darker gray. And I'm going to come in here and add just a little bit of wood texture. I'm going to start that by doing what maybe would be the different boards. So just some very light vertical lines. And then I'm going to add a little bit of wood grain. And I do that with these sort of ovals and then a line in the center and then also just sort of some more random lines 
And we don't want to go crazy with the wood grain, just a little bit here and there. And then I want to try to do a lighter version too. But I don't have very much white left. Very little clean white. But I want to do a little bit of highlights. Oh, let me just grab a little bit more white. <laughs> All right, that's always my favorite. Final touch really at the end is some nice clean highlights. Okay, so I have like an off-white here. And I'm just doing a couple simple little streaks through the bottom. I think I need some dark gray back there. Cute. And since I have my clean white, I think I'll do a few little clean white brush strokes on my grass. Maybe a little more in the center. And maybe even a little bit more of a bright highlight here in my pumpkin. And you can put any other final touches that your painting may need. But that is the end of today's class and all the instruction that I have for us this week. I'd love to know what you thought of today's painting and you can let me know in the comments section below. I'd love to, of course, see your work over in the art club, which I mentioned before. Don't forget to find the link in the description box below for that. And then of course, I invite you to join me over in the Gold Stars program on first and third Thursdays as well and check out more about that. And thank you guys so much for painting along. I had a wonderful time. I love how it turned out and I'll see you all next week. Happy painting, happy fall and stay creative.